Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Debunking DID, where we debunk the stigmas and inaccurate information that surround dissociative identity disorder. So this video is about whether or not DID is real, and I bet you can guess what I'm going to say, but don't worry, I'm going to try and not be too biased because everything I'm using is coming from recent scientific and medically accepted studies that show <laughs> beyond any reasonable doubt that dissociative identity disorder is real and its physical effects on the body and the mind. DID has been officially recognised and accepted as a psychological disorder since its inclusion in the DSM in the 1980s. It can also be found in the ICD, which is the English and European version of the DSM, which stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Health Disorders. This means that it is recognised worldwide by officials and scientists and psychological therapists as a real and treatable disorder with a known cause. One of the ways that we know DID is real is through research that has shown differences in functional imaging scans and brain scans like CAT scans. A study that was conducted in 1992, and I'm going to leave the names down here, they should be scrolling at the bottom of the screen because I will butcher them if I try and pronounce them. <laughs> a study founded in 1992 using single emission computerized tomography found that changes in personality state in a patient with DID was associated with significant fluctuations in the blood flow of the right temporal lobe in the brain. Other studies regarding researching the changes in the brain with patients with DID were conducted in 2001 and 2007 by Ozturk et al, who studied brain perfusion in a number of patients. All these patients had DID. There were 21 patients in one study and 15 in the other. Regional cerebral blood flow was found to be decreased in the left and right orbitofrontal cortex of the patients with DID, and decreased in the left, which is the dominant side, lateral temporal, or bilaterally in the occipital cortex. Two more interesting studies were conducted by Simone Reinders from the Netherlands in 2003 and 2006. She and her colleagues studied patients with DID, and using fMRI, she found different activations in the brain when patients were in distinct mental states of self-awareness, each with its own access to autobiographical trauma-related memory. So depending on which alter was out, they were able to see different brain activations and found that different alters could access trauma memory differently by looking at the brain and the brain scans. So this is biological proof. This is not something that's just been made up and you know, people are going with. This is solid evidence. If you believe in science, then here's your proof. <laughs> As in many other studies, the medial prefrontal cortex was related to these self-states and the ability of conscious reflection. Verbal working memory was investigated in 16 patients, all of which had diagnoses of DID or OSDD, which is otherwise specified dissociative disorder, and this study was undertaken in 2007 by Elzinger. They found that the patients and 16 matched normal subjects without DID activated similar brain regions which are typically involved in working memory, especially in the dorsolateral, prefrontal and parietal cortex. However, the patients with DID showed a higher level of activation in these areas and made fewer errors in increasing task load compared to the healthy participants who didn't have DID, although the people with DID did say that they felt more stressed and less able to concentrate while doing it. Use of these techniques has shown that environmentally driven alterations of cognition, perception, behaviour and self-related processing are accompanied by metabolic and even structural brain changes. Cognitive and neurological evidence demonstrates that alternative identities in DID have some qualities of separate individuals, but they are not completely separate from each other. Putnam, in 1997, argued that alternate identities are discrete states of consciousness that are demonstrably dissociated from each other. They may have different respiration rates, different muscle tone, etc. As I mentioned already, 
Rangers and her colleagues, among other researchers, have demonstrated different patterns of neural network activation and cerebral blood flow between the alternate identities of alters. They also propose that the fragmentation of informational storage may occur only when the information is personally relevant or when attempting to transfer information between different types of identities who serve different roles. So there is just some scientific proof based on brain activation, blood flow and memory which are recent, up to 2012. There are more. You can find plenty of research on POD's website, which stands for Positive Outcomes for Dissociative Survivors. They have a huge list of relevant and recent research that's all listed in date order, so if you're interested in that, I would recommend checking it out. And remember that this isn't just scientific, this is also psychological. It is in the DSM and it is in the ICD that DID is a real, diagnosable and treatable disorder. If you are a therapist and disbelieve in DID, you are allowing the stigma and misinformation out there to cloud your judgment. There is so much proof out there nowadays that dissociative identity disorder is a real disorder. We understand why it's formed. We understand that despite everything that went around a few decades ago, when people were concerned saying that it can be caused by hypnosis and bad therapy, we now know that that isn't true because after the ages of seven to nine, the personality has fully integrated and that cannot be broken by hypnosis. In order to develop DID, then trauma must interfere with the natural integration of personality, which coalesces at the age of between seven and nine. So yes, you may find it difficult to understand, and that's fine, especially if you haven't heard about anything like this before. But DID is no different to other disorders that were originally thought to be rubbish, like schizophrenia or bipolar and things like that. It is a diagnosable, scientifically proven disorder that can be treated and there can be positive outcomes for it. It's not a superpower. Having DID doesn't make you a superhero. It just means that your brain adjusted to what happened to you as a child and integrated your personality differently to how everyone else's tends to in normal development. So while you may find DID difficult to understand, and that's absolutely fine, that doesn't mean that your opinions can outweigh the facts that are given here in this video and on multiple places where you can find supported studies, real studies, and everything else that you need to make an informed and scientifically correct decision on how you feel. And even if you feel like this is still too weird for you, or you feel like the idea is possession or made up, as somebody once said to me, it's um, like a fan fiction dream or something we had one commenter say, your opinion doesn't really matter because you can think what you want, but that's not gonna change the reality of how my brain works. It's not gonna change the reality that around two to three percent of the entire population has dissociative identity disorder. It's not going to change the fact that we are valid and the way that we live is valid, and the way that our brain works is valid, and that we are supported by science. So feel free to think what you want, to make your own informed decisions. This is not me telling you what to think, this is me giving you access to information that is relevant. But please bear in mind that you do not need to understand us to respect us. I should hope that you would give us the respect as you would with any other human, regardless of whether you understand this disorder or not. And if you are interested in understanding this disorder, then that is exactly what our debunking DID playlist and series is about. So if you want to learn more about that, please go and check it out. It will be up there. If you have any questions, we've probably answered them, so make sure you have a little look through the comments or have a little look at our other videos, see if we have a video on the topic that you're going to ask about. If you still have any questions, feel free to ask us and don't forget to do your own research. So yes, DID is a real disorder. It's accepted, it's in the DSM, it's in the ICD, and there are many, many, many studies that support it and prove it. Not just support it, but prove it scientifically. So no, we're not faking our disorder. Most people with DID don't fake their disorder, and it's not up to you to decide whether they're faking or not either. So please try and support your friends with DID. 
your siblings with the ID, family with the ID, partners with the ID, and educate yourself. We are here to help you, and our entire community is here for you. If you do have DID and the thought of that scares you, we have a lot of advice videos on our channel as well, so do feel free to check those out. But I hope that this video was informational and educational for those of you who enjoy videos about science and studies. I'm hoping that this will have been your favourite video, <laughs> exactly what you wanted to hear. So don't forget to check the links to the studies out down below in the description box where you can read the whole studies and you can find links to other studies as well that haven't been mentioned. And yeah, just don't forget to check us out. Don't forget to follow us on social media and we will see you all in the next video, everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Single emission, single emission computerized, that single emission computerized was associated was associated with significant orbitofrontal core orbitofrontal core orbitofrontal core cor, cortex orbito or, orbitofrontal cortex orbit to be decreased in the left and right temporal lobes of the brain in the left and right orbital or bilaterally in the occipital cortex, or bilaterally in the occipital cortex, or especially the dorsolateral, the dors, especially the dorsolateral, prefrontal and orbital cortex. As in many other studies, the orbital no the me oh my god they found that the patients as and they.